David Scott is now joining us from the Capitol, where they'll be working hard throughout this weekend. David? You bet. And, Leslie, the Senate is going to have their hands full this weekend, and they will be working because the House members have thrown back in their face like a wet catfish this education financing bill. It's been a big bone of contention contention this entire session and it continues to be now there has been progress made on the dollar figures but how much progress when you figure there are only 11 days left in this session now the house bone to pick with the senate over this education financing is the house wants to make deeper spending cuts at stake thousands of teacher jobs and the size of classrooms they've gone from being billions apart to hundreds of millions also in the House today, another bone of contention, the Senate's huge omnibus budget bill. Governor Perry's gotten involved this week. He's made a few appearances while ringing some elbows and doing what he can. Right now, the question is, how close can they get? It happens a lot of times in all budgetary years. Two years ago, we also had a lot of this tension. This time, you've had more of a budget crisis than you've had tension. But in the end, I think you'll have a budget. Even the better version of the budget, which is the Senate version, leaves a multi-billion dollar shortfall for public education. So really, the choice between the Republican Senate plan and the Republican House plan is a choice between bad and worse. So these lawmakers will be working straight through these next 11 days. Everyone wants to avoid a special session. Again, I say differences have been whittled down. But you wonder if you're only apart $500 million or even a $1 billion, isn't that close enough to hammer a deal? But you know what? After people have compromised so much, they feel like they're going to dig in their heels. They've given in enough. At the state capitol, David Scott, KXAN Austin News. Thanks so much, David. Earlier today, Governor Perry signed that controversial sonogram bill into law. Now doctors who perform abortions in the state must first conduct a sonogram, giving the woman a chance to see the image and hear the fetal heartbeat. The only exception is for the victims of rape and incest or in cases where the fetus has fatal deformities.